In this video, we're going to be looking at our three different forms of linear equations, slope intercept, point slope, and standard form. And we're going to be looking at how to find the slope out of each of these types of linear equations. Now recall that a linear equation is just an equation of a linear function. When you graph it, you're going to get a straight line. And in order to describe any kind of linear function, we always need one of the two following. We either need two points or we need a point and a slope. So you can see from this how very important the idea of slope is uh, in order to define a linear function. And it turns out that from all three forms of equation, we are able to find our slope. So those three forms of equation, just to see that you have those again in front of you, slope intercept form y equals mx plus b point slope form y minus y sub 1 equals m times quantity x minus x sub 1 and standard form ax plus by equals c now slope itself is just the rate of change which is something that we've talked about already in this course and you're probably more familiar with it in terms of graphs as rise over run slope rate of change rise over run all of those are talking about the same thing and what that same thing is is a measure of how much the y value changes increasing or decreasing when the x value increases by one so that is if my x value goes up by one what happens to my y value and that what happens is slope in equations we represent the letter or represent the idea of slope with the letter M. Armed with that bit of knowledge, we can now look back at these forms of equation and see that from two of them at least, my slope is pretty apparent. So if I were to look at slope intercept form, and the clever amongst you might note that from the name of this slope intercept form I can probably find the slope the slope in this type of equation is represented by M so if I can find M in the equation I have found my slope so in this case the slope would be positive 3 notice that that does take the sign of that coefficient so if it's negative the slope would be negative as well so in slope intercept form it is as simple as just looking for M and whatever M is that is what your slope is point slope form again from the name we're guessing that slope will probably be something we can find from this and remember I said we represent slope with M so there it is I just look in the equation for what number has replaced m in my general form and that is my slope so for this equation the slope would be three now standard form is where it gets not so easy for slope intercept and point slope form you can read the slope right out of the equation for standard form there's a bit of work involved the slope from standard form is negative a over b and in fact it would probably be more useful to think of that as being not negative a but the opposite of a so if a was positive in our equation we want it to be negative in calculating the slope if a was negative in our equation we want the opposite of that for slope so positive either way you have to first identify a so in this case 3 and B which in this case is negative 1 notice that I'm using the addition or subtraction sign in front of the Y as the sign of my coefficient so now knowing that a is 3 and that B is negative 1 I can take the opposite of a so the opposite of positive 3 would be negative 3 divided by B which is negative 1 negative 3 divided by negative 1 is of course 3 and so that is my slope and again slope can most definitely be a negative number there is nothing wrong with that now that we've seen how to find slope from all three of these let's give it some practice 
So the first thing you're going to have to do in each one of these, and we'll start with example one because it's first, it's a good place to start. So the first thing that you have to do is identify what form of equation this is. So given y equals 13x minus 9, I should be able to now recognize this as being slope-intercept form, which means it looks like y equals mx plus b, and I know that m, the coefficient of x, is going to be my slope. So in this case, my slope, which again we represent slope with m, is just going to be 13. I can read it right off of the equation. In example 2, we see again y equals mx plus b. This is slope-intercept form. And so I need the coefficient of x. Well, there's just a negative sign in front of it. That means an implied coefficient of negative 1. So again, I'm just reading my slope right out of the equation. Looking at example 3, I see y minus 1 equals 3 times quantity x plus 4. I see those parentheses. I see what is paired with the y. And I think immediately, well, this must be point-slope form. And if it's point-slope form, my slope is just the coefficient in front of the set of parentheses. So in this case, my slope would be 3. For number 4, I get y plus 3 equals x minus 4. Now this doesn't look like slope-intercept form. The y is not by itself. This can't be standard form. The x and y aren't together. So I think that this is probably point-slope form, but my parentheses are missing. Why are my parentheses missing? Well, let's think about it. What would be on the outside of the parentheses that would not change anything about this? Well, the only thing that that could be is a 1. So if this equation written more properly in point slope form would look like this, that 1 doesn't change anything. And when it doesn't change anything, we don't really need it there. So when I see those parentheses gone, I can know that what's happened is I have an implied coefficient of 1 in that equation. And since this is point slope form, that coefficient is my slope. So in this case, it's just 1. It still boils down to the coefficient of x. Now, in example 5 is where things get a little bit more interesting, because here I have x and y on the same side of the equation, which tells me that this is standard form. And when I have standard form, my slope is going to be the opposite of a over b. So I have to identify a and b. a is the coefficient of x, so in this case 10, and b is the coefficient of y, in this case positive 5. So if I take the opposite of a, that would be negative 10 over b, which is 5. Negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. Example 6, we can see that this is standard form. Ask yourself why? That's right, x and y are on the same side of the equation. So I need to figure out what a is, in this case negative 3, and I need to know what b is. In this case, it's an implied coefficient of negative 1. And I know that my slope is the opposite of a over b. Well, a is negative 3, so the opposite of that would be positive 3. b is negative 1. So negative 3 divided by negative 1 is 3, which is my slope.